Welcome back everybody. Uh, in today's video, um, I'm just going to get back into some snapper rigs. I've had a few requests from people down south still, down Goldie and that asked me uh, about some of my favourite snapper rigs. I know I've done some videos on my favourite ones before, but these guys asked if, it's diff if they use different rigs like in deeper water or more current or what do you do? Do you still use a float line rig? Do you do something else? So what I've done, I've just made up, I think I've got four rigs here, made up for different, you know, for different water types. So I've got one here for fishing hard current. I'll, this is like a dam down south, guys fish a lot of hard current. They use this rig. I've got the float line rigs here as well. And just a couple of other ones that we used to use when we were fishing like 36s and 50 fathoms down off southeast Queensland out in deeper water chase them in a little bit of current. And you still do quite well. You just don't do. You just don't use uh, traditional float line rigs. Rigs I've done before. They're similar, just basically bigger. Okay, let's get into it, guys. Um, first off, we'll start off with back to basics. You've seen me make this rig before. This is just a normal everyday float line rig, but this is the one I use. This is the one of a bit, bit of a twist. Okay, other guys do make this rig, but they don't use a limo tube here. Or some guys use a bead, some guys don't. I use a rubber uh, bead, I always have, I have for like 20 years. Used a bead and I use, over the last probably 10 years or so, I'm using some tube. The reasons I do that, first of all, um, it attracts fish. It really does. So a bit of limo never hurts. Second reason, the reason I use the bead, because I, I stop the sinker banging against the hook. Surprisingly, that makes a little tinny sound. And I don't think the vibrations do a lot of good or for fish and water either, but I don't know, that's just thought, but maybe true, maybe not. But anyway, I always, I always put a bead there between the sinker and a hook. The reason I put a limo tube between the hooks here, and there's two reasons for that. First is, it's from, or well, snap, snapper got crushing, crushing teeth. So if you get your line in there, they're going to squash it, then probably break off, especially on big fish. It's not going to do your line any good. So first of all, it's a bit of a it's mainly protection for the teeth okay it's attractant and it's protection it protects your line between the two hooks that's all it is and then some other guys asked me how to bait up and stuff it's very easy i've done videos on it before i can put the video i'll put the links in the videos below for this rig how to make it and and how to bait it up it's very simple but it's just a flat lining rig okay and the sinker size well that depends on the day and the current that's something you're going to have to change on the fly if it's sinking too fast, you have to go down a size or two or three. If it's not getting down at all, you have to go up a size. But that's something you've got to work out on the day with the current. That takes a little bit of practice. That's all that is, guys. It's just practice. Um, okay. The second one's another float lining rig. I see a lot of guys using this nowadays and on YouTube and even uh, when I've taken on fishing and stuff, people use this. It's a float lining rig again. Once again, I'll put the bead there between the sinker and the hook. The only difference is, these are circle hooks. With the other one there, the one I usually use, I usually run octopus, just straight octopus. A lot of guys now are using circle hooks while they're float lining. It's not my thing, I don't particularly like it. I've never really had great success, especially with big fish, uh, circle hooks, float lining. It's just never really worked for me. I just use tradi traditional um, octopus. But other guys now are starting to use circle hooks. So that's another way to make them. You can use circles. Okay. Um, the next one is, this is the main one. People, especially down southeast Queensland and stuff, they want to go out wider, get away from the crowds in close. There's a lot of people you know, fishing in close now. It's getting really busy. So they're going out wider. And they're wondering if these rigs, will, like the flatlining rigs, will work out wider. And I'm going to say yes, they will. But being in deeper water and more current, you have to upgrade the size of your sinkers. Okay, You just have to go up quite depending on the current and the depth, quite large sinkers. But you've got to go up, upgrade the sinkers, but those rigs will still work. But over the last few years, um, a lot of people have just been keeping it very simple. And this is the rig they're using. Once again, it's sort of like a float lining rig. But you can see the size of the sinker, that's an eight ball. An eight ball, say out in 80 metres, 60, 70, 80 metres, is a common size sinker. Once again, you've got a little bead here, but they put it on gang tool. So you put in a whole pilchard or a yakka or a slimy or a slimy fillet or something, but something, a nice big bait on gang hooks with an eight ball. And this is the rig most of the guys are starting to use out wider. And 
it's very very simple to make as you see just tie the gang hook straight on little green bead and an eight ball sinker six ball or eight ball but that's an eight ball and that's just what they're using out in the deeper water nowadays for the snapper okay that's a very common rig very basic rig and it works an absolute treat see just like so so that's another one and what else we got here oh last but not least fishing and hard current especially shallow water currents um hard current up and down the east coast in victoria port phillip bay sort of areas when there's you know fairly shallow water but the currents you get a really hard current the snapper don't mind a bit of current but it makes float lining and stuff very very hard especially a light sinkers so one of the common rigs is basically what i've got here okay so first of all from the swivel Usually a fairly long weight, like about a metre or so, even a, bit, a little bit longer, down to your hook. You can use a single hook like this, or you can put snell hooks on. That's going to be personal choice. That's up to you. Lumo tube, beads, that's up to you. But also, just for that demonstration, I've got a single hook here, okay? And it's a bit over a metre long. And it goes to a swivel, okay? And then from the leader, you've got your swivel up to your main line. That's going to your rod. That's up to your rod. But this one... I've got a snapper lead on here. That's like an eight ounce, I think. Eight or a 10 ounce snapper lead. On a similar sort of trace, that's a little bit, little bit lighter. The trace line I made all these out of is 40 pound. Most of the time when I'm chasing snapper, I run 30 to 40 pound, you know, chasing big fish. So 30 to 40 pound leader. And with a sinker one now, I've only got 20 pound. So it's still very strong. But if you get snagged or this gets snagged, there's a fair chance you'll break this off instead of losing the whole rig and losing the fish. But I've got that as 20 pound. And that one is once again the same sort of deal. You've got a swivel at the top, you know, probably what to say, eight inches or so down to the sinker, line down to the sinker. But that's on your main line and that's sliding. So on a bit of hard current, you can drop this down, the big sinker should hold the bottom. And you can let a little bit of line out and your bait will waft away and just slowly wave in the current, which is great, down near the bottom. The only thing I will say about fishing hard current and rigs like this, when you put your bait in the water, make sure it's not spinning. If it's spinning, it's not going to work. Fish won't eat it. Make sure it's just waving nice, just waving in the current, not spinning. Okay? So that's just a basic rig as well, but it's basically a sliding rig, sliding sinker. Okay, so that can slide and let your bait go away from the sinker a bit. And if a decent fish picks it up and you've got a bait runner or something, he can pick it up and he can run with it. He's going to have no restriction. Like uh, if that was tied on, he's trying to drag that, he's going to drop the bait and leave. But if you've got a bait runner, the fish can pick it up, he can run, the sinker's going to stay there and the reliance is going to run off. And the fish can run a bit, swallow the bait, and then you can hook up. Okay, just with that one, just make sure it's sliding. That's just two swivels. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can see that in the camera, I'll just put it there. Two swivels, okay? And that works very well. And that's a good snapper rig. And it'll also work well for gummies and jews and stuff down south and east coast. All sorts of different fish. It's just a good rig to fish in hard current. I've even, that's one of the main rigs I used to use when I was growing up down south, chasing jewfish in the rivers uh, with a live bait. Use that rig there with a live bait on it in hard current, hook him through the nose, he sits in the current and swims with that rig. If the fish picks it up, he can run, feels no restriction from the sinker. Works well. It's an, that's, just, that's a really good rig, that one. And it's another good one to use in the surf, too. A lot of guys use that sort of rig in the surf when they're chasing snapper and gummies and dew in the, in the surf. That's a good one. Okay. Next thing, what I, the, other, the other thing I'm going to show you is what type of hooks and stuff I use. Generally, nowadays, I use BKKs. Okay. They're my go to hook. If they're in circles or octopus, Whatever they are, I just run BKKs. They're a very strong hook. They're a very sharp hook. They work well. They're not cheap by any means, but they are very good. And they don't, you know, the point doesn't rust or roll over or fall off in the first time you use them like cheaper hooks. You can use them a few times. Okay, which is a bonus. Just don't go sticking the hooks you use back in the new packet. Keep them separate. <laughs> okay, just if you use them, you use hooks, keep them separate from the ones in, in the packet, the new ones. That's all. Another thing is, guys, leader. Like I said, I usually run 30 or 40 pounds. Some of you guys are going to think that's really heavy. Um, depending on where you're fishing and what you're fishing for and how big you fish, yeah, it is. But I'm usually running big baits and live baits and stuff for snapper when I used to do it down south. 
and chase some big fish, like eight to 10 kilo fish. And I used to always run, say, 40 pound, 30 to 40 pound, no lighter, no lighter than 30, no heavier than 40. It's usually sufficient for big fish, okay? If I was going chasing a few squire and pinkies and stuff down south, smaller fish and doing it on plastics, I'd probably get out a 20 pound liter. But chasing big fish, big baits, I run usually run 40. And now the other reason I do that is when you're fishing for these fish, and big fish and shallow water and a bit of current where you're fishing for them, a lot of the time you'll end up hooking a jewfish or a gummy shark or something different. Okay, so the 40 pound will help out when you hook a big fish. Okay, um, and the other thing is too, sinker size. Once again, sinkers is going to depend on the current and what type of fish. And you want a float line, you're going to go down to like zeros or triple zeros or ones or twos depending on the current. But you have to work that out on the fly as you're out there. That's something you've just got to get used to and work out. You don't want your bait skimming along the surface of the current. You don't want it sinking straight down to the bottom either. You want it wafting down through the water column slowly. And that's just, you might have to change the sinkers half a dozen times. But so be it. That's it. You're out there, you want to catch a good fish, do it. If you're just going to sit there and whinge, oh, I can't be bothered changing sinkers, this is too hard. Well, you're not going to catch any big fish. Go home, take up bowling. You really have to change for the times and the tides and whatever else there. Be prepared to change, sit down, change knots, I mean, change sinkers, change rigs. It's just part of fishing. And if you want to catch some good quality fish, you need to do it. It's just the way it is. It really is. Okay. So take a variety of sinkers out, different leaders, rigs. Um, you can take all these rigs out with you. And depending on if you're fishing in close or you're fishing out wide or there's a lot of current or no current, use one of these rigs. They'll all work for snapper. Uh, anyway, I've read all on enough there. Anyway guys, I hope that one helps you with your fishing, or snapper fishing down south. Um, yeah, it's just a bit different than my other snapper videos. The other ones I just talked about the float loading rig. And I will put the links to this rig and how to bait it up below. In the you know, description area. And apart from that guys, I'm going to say good luck. Snapper season is going to start soon. Uh, it'll get better throughout the year, and I hope you guys go out and catch some big fish. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.